joining me on Upfront. Um, sure. Rwanda has made huge economic and democratic advances, huge progress uh, mm -hmm. since that awful, horrific genocide there 22 years ago. And yet, nevertheless, today, a plethora of international human rights mm. groups line up to issue report after report mm. uh, criticizing the human rights situation uh, mm. in your country. Human Rights Watch says your government, quote, does not tolerate dissent. Uh, it's documented arbitrary arrests, unlawful detentions, mm. enforced disappearances. Amnesty International says Rwanda journalists, human rights defenders, members of the opposition face a repressive environment. As the foreign minister, as the face of your government abroad, do such mm. regular criticisms embarrass you, make you uncomfortable? No, um, the criticism that Rwanda receives uh, partly comes from misunderstanding where Rwanda is trying to go. Um, everybody knows Rwanda's history and, and the genocide and the, and the recovery, but we've made some choices as, as a nation and as a country that are not typical, uh, that fit uh, our own desires that we have for our country. Um, and so, for example, Rwanda has opted, and Rwandans, because this was a very consultative process, to uh, go for um, not confrontational but conse consensual politics. And so, you know, right there, when there is no confrontation um, and, and big fights in, in politics, uh, then there is, you know, there are critics who, who think that. Uh, um, there is repression and people cannot speak up, but those were really our choices from the beginning. Uh, Locking people up without trial, arbitrary arrests, enforced disappearances, that's not consensus politics. Well, those are human rights abuses, well, well, documented by human rights groups and by even friends look, of yours. Look, if you pick any country, yes. not just Rwanda, uh, you can pick uh, human rights Agreed. issues Agreed, but we're talking about everywhere. Rwanda today because you're the foreign... I've interviewed foreign ministers from other countries. Sure. I'm asking about Rwanda when human rights groups, you know, it's, it's, you know, the rankings aren't great. Reporters Without Borders ranks Rwanda 161 out of 180 countries when it comes to press freedom. It says in its most recent report that censorship is ubiquitous in Rwanda and journalists who, quote, dare to criticise the government risk imprisonment or exile. I've always uh, wanted to know uh, specifics about these cases. When you pick a country and say there are abuses of human rights, there is no freedom, there are no liberties, exactly what? Uh, they, because it's important to go through these. They mentioned the specifics, all the newspapers that are shut, j journalists who are arrested, who have had to flee the country, the director of Christian Radio, the managing editor of the Rushyasha newspaper, two women from the University of Rwanda radio station, arrested for broadcasting material deemed offensive to the president. BBC Radio banned uh, because it was accused of promoting genocide ideology. The BBC absolutely. accused of promoting genocide ideology. Seriously? The, 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 yes, yes, absolutely. The BBC uh, produced uh, a, a, a documentary film which is a total denial of the history of Rwanda, particularly the history of the genocide. So in Rwanda, that is not acceptable. In the UK, maybe that's a different okay. story. Given, I mean, look, so, the so BBC can defend themselves. I think most people would question the BBC being uh, genocide promoters. The, but it's not just the reporters without borders. The BBC refused to come to Rwanda and defend itself. We it's, invited the BBC. It did not want to come and, and, and explain. OK, but it's not just the BBC or Amnesty or Human Rights Watch or Reporters Without Borders. Governments who are allies of yours, friends of yours, the United States, for example, the US State Department said in a statement a couple of years ago it was deeply concerned by the arrest and disappearance of dozens of Rwandan citizens, people held incommunicado, and by, quote, credible reports that individual journalists had been threatened by the authorities. That's the US government. That's your ally. There is nothing unusual about uh, governments and allies uh, disagreeing on things. Um, the, the United States is indeed an ally of Rwanda. We've worked together uh, for many years, but every now and then we disagree on certain things uh, on the way we do business Just as we find some of the practices in the United States Not the way it would be done in Rwanda. So we respect that um, We we want to keep improving on on any front economic or, or political But it's it's absolutely normal to to have countries disagree no, with what you, Rwanda so, does so, so, you, so you're willing to take their aid money, but reject their criticism of your human rights um, Let's, well, first of all, let's say that uh, aid is not charity. Uh, and aid money that Agreed. has come to Rwanda has been used effectively. 
we, we can account as Fine. a government for every dollar that comes uh, into Fair our enough. country. No one was suggesting otherwise now, in this particular. Uh, I'm so just making the point that these are your allies saying this stuff. You've got mm. the US government, you, mm. you've even got your own fellow African government. South Africa expelled uh, three Rwandan diplomats in 2014 after an attack on the home of an exiled Rwandan dissident, which came three months after the killing of the Rwandan former intelligence chief in Johannesburg, found strangled in his hotel but, room. But you know that that case has, has not been uh, investigated. At least the results are not out. So I don't know. But the South Africans think you were behind it. They kicked out three of your diplomats. Well, they didn't that, do that for that, no reason. That would have to be adjudicated, and a court, a court would have to decide on that. So Fair as long enough. as it's not decided, uh, my government is not to be accused of anything. I didn't say that. I didn't say that they're guilty of anything. No, no, I said no. the South Africans seem no, no, to no. think you were involved. That's all I'm saying. Th you would agree with that. That's 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 a way of. Uh, justifying the question that you no, were posing. No, it's a way of pointing out to you that you're on your own page. There seems to be, everyone seems to not agree with you let, when it comes to these issues. Let Rwanda me, seems to be on its own. Let me put it this way. Yeah. Um, Rwanda, as any other country that I know of, has its own way of doing things, and not everybody should be agreeing uh, with what the government of Rwanda is doing. Should everyone agree when the Rwandan defense minister said in relation to that murdered former intelligence chief, when you choose to be a dog, you die like a dog? President Kagame himself said, whoever betrays the country will pay the price, will face negative consequences. That's not your government basically nudging and winking that they were behind those killings. Let me again put it this way. I don't know anybody who betrays a country uh, that gets uh, rewarded. Uh, let me just put it this way. Okay, but when you say you choose to be a dog, you die like a dog, is that an appropriate thing to say? Some might say that sounds like a gang leader, not a national leader. When, 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 when somebody comes after uh, my country and threatens the security of my country. Well, he's from your country, with respect. He was a former intelligence chief of your country. Absolutely, president. absolutely. So Whomever it is, he's a if, you threaten, if you threaten my country. Did he, thre did he threaten I, your country? The yes, he did, absolutely. Was he prosecuted? Yes, he for, what was he prosecuted he for? He absolutely did. No, what no, was he no. We're talking for? about what he did. I'm asking for what he was prosecuted what for. What he did is Agreed. he allied himself with militias that were attacking Rwandans and throwing grenades in Rwanda. Was he prosecuted for that? What was he prosecuted for? Who, who, who was supposed to prosecute Moments him? ago, you told me that Rwandan government can't be accused of anything because it's not been adjudicated in a court of law. What was this former intelligence chief found guilty of the in The government court of, law? of Rwanda approached the government of South Africa to have this man extradited but for, for trial. Agreed, that but, he never was, but he wasn't tried. That so never according happened. to your criteria, if Rwanda is innocent of crimes because it's never been found guilty in a court of law, this man is also innocent of but crimes. But it's not, I'm just it's using not, your logic, it's not the government of Rwanda that refused to extradite him for but trial. But you agree he wasn't we actually... Didn't. We didn't. But you asked, agree he was convicted of no crime. We asked for him to be extradited. But you agreed he was convicted of no crime. We agree on that. He was convicted of How no crime. How can he be convicted when the, he's not allowed okay. to face trial, which is and yet you're what celebrating Rwanda his was death. wanted? Fair enough. And yet you're celebrating the death of a man who was convicted of nothing. Why should I be uh, unhappy about my enemies and people who well, we don't know who um, threatened because he hasn't been tried, as, as you pointed out. Um, a few years ago, your boss, President Kagame, told the Financial Times in an interview that I don't think anybody out there in the media, the UN, human rights organizations, has any moral right whatsoever to level any accusations against me or against Rwanda. Many would say that those, those are the words not just of authoritarian, that's quite megalomaniacal. I am above criticism. <laughs> no one should criticize me. What, what the president is saying is what he believes. President Kagame is a very accountable man, and, and everything he's done uh, for Rwanda is out in the open. Uh, he's a man who's, who's done extraordinary things uh, for Rwanda. And he's also, if, if you know President Kagame, a man who doesn't uh, hide or, or, or do things uh, in the background. He's, if, he's, 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 if he doesn't he's hide, been totally accountable. Why has he supported a constitutional amendment that was just passed, uh, which effectively gives former presidents of Rwanda exemption from prosecution? Given the increasing level of criticism of your government, we've talked about some of the countries and groups that have criticized President Kagame, uh, was it wise for him to support that constitutional amendment, uh, which also allowed him to run now for a third seven-year term? President Kagame has responded to what the people of Rwanda wanted, and there is nothing wrong with that. Um, why would he not? Uh, President Kagame well, has had uh, uh, time to reflect about what uh, the people of Rwanda wanted. This is an exercise that went on for almost two years, eventually ended up in parliament, 
and and uh, came to his political party. His political party supported it. Uh, supported it. You support it. Absolutely. And yet, it's Absolutely. The, and yet it allows President Kagame to potentially stay in office until 2034, which would put him in office for a total of 34 years, more than a third of a century uh, in a country that's a young democracy, a fragile democracy. Is that healthy for someone to be in power for a third of a century? First of all, let's not uh, anticipate what the future uh, will be in Rwanda. Um, uh, second, I don't see what's wrong with uh, staying in office. I think what we need to be worried about is what people do while in office. Um, you know, for me and for many Rwandans, democracy is not about coming and going. It's about exactly what you do when you're in office. And again, it's a decision of the people. If they want uh, any leader out of the office, it's, it's their prerogative. Before we finish, we've talked a lot about human rights criticisms of your country, mm. but there's one area where you're heavily praised on the human rights front, and that's when it comes to women's rights and representation. Uh, the Rwandan parliament isn't just a majority female parliament. It has the highest proportion of female MPs of any legislature in the world. How did that happen? Um, the story of Rwanda and, and the uh, rights of women is, is a story uh, rooted in our belief that um, men and women are equal. Uh, that women can do, if not as well, uh, better uh, than men. And I think the women in Rwanda's parliament have, have proven that. Um, we are a, an administration and, and a country that uh, feels that a big portion of our population should not be left out. So it's a deliberate policy. Uh, but I think over time, women in Rwanda have delivered. Um, they, they've produced uh, both at the level of legislature but also in the socio-economic transformation of, of the country. They've, they've done a very good job. Uh, so that's how it happened. Uh, results um, uh, were a, a motivating factor for Rwandans to bring more women into uh, both parliament but also the executive. And under Rwanda's constitution, almost one third of parliamentary seats have to be occupied by female politicians. Do you think that's a model which other countries that lack Rwanda's level of female representation, for example, the United States, uh, should copy, should emulate? Is quotas the way forward? I don't know what, what uh, every country uh, has to choose their own path. Uh, so it's not up to me to say what uh, countries should be copying from Rwanda. But certainly there have been very good things uh, in Rwanda that could be helpful elsewhere. Louise Mushikiwabo, thanks for